Hey, what's up? Welcome back. This is part 18 of ClearBNB. In this episode, we're going to be working on adding a Google map to our listings list view and attempting to at least render some pins for where those listings are on the map. Um, and we'll see how far we get. I don't know how this is going to go. We have this is uh, we're going in cold, so we're going to try. Uh, we're going to try and add this. We're going to be using StimulusJS today. Um, as a reminder, in the last episode we built out the pagination so that we can page through our listings. And in this episode, again, we're gonna just drop in a map. So I think the way that we wanna do this is by using stimulus. So I'm gonna do another stimulus controller. So Rails G stimulus, um, and we'll call this like listing, listing map. I don't know what the, um, if, we, if we call it listing underscore map, that names the file correctly and totally as expected. Um, but we'll see if that if that causes any trouble in the future. I think that underscore, I think in practice, maybe this is gonna be like listing dot, uh, dash map, if I recall correctly. So we'll just say uh, console.log when this is connected. And then we'll go to our listing index again. And I actually wanna wrap up almost the entire thing inside of a stimulus controller, because what I wanna do is I'm actually gonna embed the listings lat long inside of the data for each of these sort of LIs. Um, and then we'll, we'll create the map on sort of a, uh, inside of this whole thing. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So data controller is listing map. And then we are going to have, this thing is actually gonna be a grid, a two column grid. So we're gonna call this um, uh, grid grid calls to, and then um, call span one. So the list is gonna be call span one, and then we're gonna have the map appear over here as a second div. So this is gonna be like div ID, or I guess like div data um, target, data listing map target is map, and it's gonna have the class of um, call span one also. Call span one. Who's span and who are we calling? Okay, so there should be a div here. Oops. There should be a div here that has, uh, okay, yep. So I don't know if you can see that. So we've got a div with call span one. That's where we're gonna try to drop in our map. And uh, the way that we're gonna do that is by listening for the same sort of trigger that we did for the address autocomplete. So if you recall in our address controller, we're using the Google Maps API on the client already for autocomplete when we create a new listing. So if we go to add new listing here, we can enter an address like, I don't know, 123 Main Street in whatever, Watertown, Massachusetts. Um, so we're already, we're already using the Google Maps API. It's gonna be the same sort of API uh, or the, the same JavaScript client, it's just gonna be a little bit different API to set up a map and everything. Um, so we'll use a similar pattern where we will initialize uh, Google. And again, if we look back at our, um, our application pack, we have this little helper, this window helper that I um, stole from uh, Chris Oliver um, around waiting for the Google Maps API to be completely loaded. So if we look at application co controller here or application HTML, when we're loading up uh, Google Maps, at the very end, we specify um, which function to call, like the callback. And that callback is init map, which is this function on the window. When that function is called, it emits a custom event. That custom event we're listening to on the listing new page. Um, down here. So we're saying, listen for the map loaded event on the window and when that fires, call the address um, stimulus controllers init Google function. So we actually want basically this whole data action and we're gonna reuse that inside of our listings index. Um, but here, instead of initializing the autocomplete, we're gonna initialize a new map. So we'll go back to our listing map controller and we wanna call that same init Google function. So if window.google, then we're gonna call this.init Google. 
Um, and down here we'll define init Google as some um, stimulus controller function thing that we're gonna do. Um, so this is the code from the documentation on the Google Maps site. And it works like this. So this is our lat long. This is supposed to be sort of like where our current location is. And we'll ultimately try to derive that from either someone typing in an address that they want to search for, where they want to go, or based on where they currently are. All right, the next part of this is that we want to initialize a new instance of the map. So we're gonna initialize a new instance of the map. It has a specific zoom. This is like how far in or out of this, uh, zoomed in or out of the map you are. I wanna say the furthest you can zoom in is 11, but I might be wrong. Zoom four is pretty, pretty zoomed out. So I think you can see like an entire country that way. And the way that this Google Maps uh, constructor function works is it takes in a reference to the map object. So we're actually gonna use this dot map target. And we need to specify um, our targets as the map. And that is how this is wired up as the sort of element that we want to target when we're initializing and mounting that map. All right, so if we come back over here, when we initialize Google, let's go back to our listings page here. Oh, look at that, we've already got a map, holy moly. Okay, so we, we totally have a map showing up, that's great. Um, it's got, we have like a little bit of, it's too close to our list of listings, so we have some styling to do. Um, so let's give this sort of like a, uh, actually we can use the gap on the, on the class here, so we can say gap four. That's usually pretty good. All right, that gives us some breathing room. And then we do wanna drop a pin on the map. So let's see how we can do that. If we go back over here, this is how you uh, create a pin. It's called a marker and it takes in a position, which is a lat long. And we'll look at what this hello world title gives us. So that's like if you hover over it, notice that it says hello world there. So what we wanna do now is um, go through all of our listings and drop each or drop pins for each of those listings on the map somewhere. So if we inspect these and take a look, we have each listing is an LI and we have some data inside of that LI. There's a couple different ways we could do this. If we were using React or another front end framework, we might approach it differently by passing some JSON to the front end or doing some other things. Uh, like that, but what I wanna do is, I'm actually gonna just take the data from the listing and just put it into the HTML as data dash attributes. Um, so let's do that now. So let's grab our, um, here in this LI, and we can, I think we can say data lat is listing dot lat, and data long is listing dot long, this is really gonna be just kind of like a basic way to pass along the lat and long for each of these listings. And now inside of our, well, that one doesn't have a lat long, but um, <laughs> each of these other listings do. So now we have a, a lat and we have a long for uh, FSDA, FS, <laughs> FDSA. So uh, we wanna take these lat longs, create pins out of them and drop them on the map. In order to access all of these data dash attributes, we wanna iterate over some list of things. And so in order to get that list, instead of trying to like embed the listing ID into the data dash attributes, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a data listing map uh, target to the UL called listings. And that will allow us to add a new target um, that we can use to access sort of the top level listing. And then we'll like sort of iterate over all of those children LIs and use them to look up their their um, their data dash attributes. So I'm going to call a new create a new method called um, add markers, and what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to iterate over all of the children for uh, that listing target. So we're going to say something like this dot listings target dot children, and that gives us back an HTML collection. So we can say array dot from that thing, dot for each, and then we're gonna iterate over all of these. This is gonna give us a listing sort of LI. Um, and for each of those LIs, we will create new map markers that we're gonna drop onto the map. 
Now the lat long in this case is going to be uh, lat is listing.dataset.lat and the long is going to be listing data set dot long. We're going to pass in the same map. Now we don't actually have access to the map at this point. So what we're going to do is need to we'll need to pass that down as an argument to the add markers function. And then for the title, we actually probably want the title to be the uh, the actual title of the um, of the listing. Now I'm not sure what's going on here. Why it sometimes isn't loading? Okay, let's see. So uh, lat is not number. So let's say, let's just say like, um, if listing.data set.lat, like only if we actually have a latitude, will we attempt to drop a pin for that? Otherwise we'll just skip over it. Um, okay. So it's not always, it doesn't seem like it's always loading set position lat long or lat long literal lat is not a number. So let's try um, hmm. console.log listing.dataset.lat. We might need to like parse it or something like, um, yeah, why isn't that always going? Okay. Uh, okay, so let's, let's call this um, parse float, because I think it might be a string. Uh, I'm not sure if that matters. And we'll refresh the page. And okay, let's see. Oh, look at that. There's there's listings. Okay, there there are pins being dropped on the map. It seems like there are not okay, there's not six, but that's because some of these listings don't actually have pins. Um, and then also we're being reset. Okay, cool. We're being reset back to Australia because that's sort of the search position that we're passing in as the initial position. Um, but at least we're able to drop the pins on the map. Let's also add the uh, title as a data dash attribute. So listing.title, and then we can just add that here as the title. We can just say listing.dataset.title. And now when we refresh the page, if we go to, let's go to page one and see if we can find our listing. So that's preferendus. This is FDS, okay. All right, um, cabin in the woods. How come you don't have, oh, you know what? Cabin in the woods doesn't have a lat long, that's why. So if we go to my listings, let's try to add a new one. And we're gonna say like, find me on the map in California and test and we'll say, I don't know, um, 200 Townsend, uh, San Francisco, California, oops, 200 Townsend, San Francisco, California. And then we need to add a nightly price, nine, 900 and a cleaning fee of 200. Uh, and then we will say create listing. All right, so now we have this lat long, 37 and 122, and that should be somewhere in San Francisco. So if we go back to our listings and Let's see, I guess it's gonna be on, oh, you know what we need to do is publish it. So we need to find that one we just created and edit the details and mark it as published. Go back to our listings view and, okay, here we go. Find me on the map, listing 25. If we go to San Francisco, look at that. Find me on the map, boom. Okay, so this should bring us to Townsend Street in San Francisco. Okay, look at that, Townsend, oh nice, Townsend Street, and I don't know, Fremont Bank, okay, who knows, <laughs> uh, but that at least we are on the right track of being able to drop listings onto the map, we can see them on the map, um, and if we, what's cool is if we change, um, as we change around the page, we can see the new listings that are appearing on the map. Now, one thing that might be really cool is as we drag the map and drop it, if um, we would update the list of listings that's on the left. Similarly, I, like notice that when I click on page two, the map resets to that new location. So it's almost like as we're moving around the map, we wanna update our query string params so that um, when we make a full page reload with Pagey here, 
uh, it maintains the last position on the map. Even better would be to do this all sort of like with JavaScript. Um, but I'm actually pretty happy with where this is landing right now uh, because we have listings and they are showing up on a map. Uh, so yeah, I think that's where we will stop today. And yeah, if this was useful or helpful, I would really appreciate a subscribe, thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.